So hello and welcome, I'm Frederick Dunn and today I'm going to walk you through a lightning round of supering my beehives. This is the Apame 7 frame nucleus hive that was occupied by a swarm this spring. And they're moving along pretty quick. In fact, throughout the apiary, everything's building up fast. That's my smoker. I'm going to talk about that smoker fuel at the end of this because it lasts for hours and it's really interesting. So we're going to pull this off. Classic Apame clamps that hold it together. Does really well. There is no syrup in these hive top feeders. I'm also paying attention to the hive top feeders to see if the bees are propolizing and sealing up the vents. It is set for the liquid setting, but again, we're not going to feed because we're supering. Even though this hive, we're not going to be taking any honey off. I'm going to use this here to grow and look what's going on right here. There is a resident jumping spider at every single hive in my apiary, and I've gotten very used to them. It's interesting. That's the nest. Because they don't use webs, they scoot around, and yes, they hunt your bees. I did another video just about that, and I apologize in advance if you don't like spiders. But you know, if you were going to like a spider, I would say that uh, this is one species that probably could get a pass. They're black. They're also called the bold spider bold jumpers and uh, maybe they eat one bee a day that's okay by me they can be there they're really passive and here's the other thing they're curious about people they don't always run and hide the way you would expect a spider to and the reason I know that is because this one although it's pinwheeling around inside its little cottony web area uh, does not seem to be scared at all and look Further down the line, there's another one. Here it comes. That's a female right there. She's not running away. She's coming towards me. She does some interesting things with her forelimbs here, which I think is pretty interesting. Almost like a semaphore communicator here. She raises her forelimbs. Look at this. What's going on? It's like, hey, I'm over here. Did you notice? So yeah, I see you there. I think that's weird. And then she disappears, scoots all over the place, comes closer and closer to me, which I find very interesting. Maybe it's misidentification because she sees the lens of a camera and thinks maybe that's a big eye too. So she's just saying, hey, not too far from the other one that's underneath of that uh, cottony web. So I won't make you stare at that for very long in case you don't like spiders, but I think it's interesting that they're everywhere. But let's look at this hive. Seven frames almost all the way full, and that's why I wanted to make sure and get the message out to the people that are in my area, northeastern United States, northwestern Pennsylvania in this case. That's 80% full. You have to super it. So I put another deep on there, and I'm going to try something for fun here. I'm going to do Ross rounds. So I have new foundation in there, clear plastic rings, and we're going to see if by keeping them in the center two spots that uh, we're going to see if this nucleus hive builds those up. We also put uh, heavy wax acorn foundation in there and we're closing it up. No syrup, no feed. There's plenty coming in from the environment. So there's nectar, there's pollen, even without rain. And a lot of other people are saying the same thing. We're getting a bumper crop of honey this year. So that's the configuration. I'm keeping all these vents closed because I want to keep the brood down near the entrance. And that's how I avoid using a queen excluder. And then this is the hive next to it. Now this is a full size one. So it's a 10 frame deep Langstroth Apame hive, hive number 30 here. You have the sliding front entrance there so you can control that. But I'm going to super them too with another deep. So a deep 10 frame. But instead of the normal frames, I'm going to install two Cirrocell rapid rounds also. And so this has nothing but foundation that's been heavy wax. So we're not giving them a boost there. They have their own spider too. Look at that. I'm telling you, they're everywhere. They don't care that you're here. And that one looks like it's already done with its little web area. Either that or I tore it apart when I pulled the lid off. I don't know. But we're going to take a look at uh, the feeders here. And you'll notice that these bees in this colony are sealing up all these vent slats with propolis. Propolis comes from trees around here, sap from plants that are defending themselves. And the bees collect it, bring it in, and spread it around. But look at all of the beeswax and the capped honey in here. If we weren't supering, they'd be swarming. And we've got, it looks like, about two and a half frames that are not yet completely drawn out. 
So that's an indicator that you need a super hive because the population is good. Everything's going well. We're going to put another deep on there. These bees are really quiet too. We did give them light puffs of smoke, but we didn't have to overdo it. Now the super's on. Apame hives are very convenient. And uh, we're leaving space on the ends here so that when we go to inspect later, we can pull them to the sides before we start to pull them up. So I like to push all the frames to the middle. I also like to mark the ends so that if you're pulling them, I like to put them back the same way. And again, closing the vents, no upper venting. And again, the bees are telling us they don't want the upper venting because look, they sealed up those vents through the feeders. Uh, with propolis. So we're going to slide this one open a little bit if we want to. You can open or close those down. If you're worried about robbing later on, you can close them up, make it smaller, easy to defend. So now we have double deeps on that one. Now let's go over here to this flow hive base. And that's a cedar flow hive with a standard pine, looks like a man lake, medium super, and uh, no feed. This is a B Smart Designs insulated inner cover with a box around it so we can accommodate feed. And I'm going to pull that off and we're going to super it. Always bring your bucket with you so you can collect the burr comb and scrapings. And I'm going to put a flow super on this one. And each time you use these flow supers, the bees take to them quicker. So if we lift that insulated inner cover, look at the population there. Once again, we're just in time with the supering. They're filling up. If we let them fill completely wall to wall, you're kind of in a pickle because they may already be making plans to swarm out. So let's take advantage of this nectar flow. Here we are, June 11th. This was filmed uh, on June the 10th. And most of these are already capped honey. So gotta do something. Either that, or if you left them sealed up just like that, they would uh, build their populations and swarm out. You end up with a new queen. And you have to scrape off these uh, B Smart Designs inner covers because there's zero clearance above them. So if you're putting in a flow super, that doesn't have any clearance above that. See the frames there? So this uh, insulated inner cover is going to rest directly on that. Scrape away all the burr cone, propolis, and things like that, and you get a good fit like this. The other thing is make sure that all of your flow frames, if you have them, are in the closed position. That means when you look through these clear views on the end, they should be pushed down. You can't really put the caps in unless they're pushed down anyway, but I'm just reminding you it's one of the reasons that some flow frames don't get used by the bees. They're installed in the open or drain position. So that's the setup. Adjustable feet sitting on this. That's one of my oldest hive stands. It's been there since 2006. Still going strong. And it does have a slatted rack on it. Uh, that's a two inch spacer standard deep and this is only an eight frame box and uh, eight frame medium super and then the six flow frame flow super and I already checked them today and they're already working the cells so we did that in the nick of time and we've got that uh, feeder shim on top but do not feed because we want pure honey out of this thing now we're taking a look at hive seven solid bottom board two inch slatted rack deep and this is a 10 frame deep and then a medium super. So we have to get on top of this. Look at it again, capped honey. Lots of new wax here. You know, it's new because it's nice and white and pure looking across the board. We do have a couple of frames here that are not yet drawn out completely. So we didn't miss our time opportunity. And we're gonna super this hive too. So I wanna lift that up just to show you that they're already pulling out wax from this acorn foundation look at that and I do like the wooden frames now around the plastic foundation because I think about when we're scraping propolis with our tools we're not scraping plastic by some chance so now we have another medium super on there 10 frame medium and we're gonna see how that goes and uh, I think they're gonna fill things up quick because as I said they are rapidly expanding one of my observation hives even swarmed today very annoying so anyway we're all configured there medium medium and a deep slatted rack entrance reducer three eighths by three inches solid landing board hive number six 
has that laminate material on the bottom board that I don't like anymore. I won't be using that stuff. I'm not going to replace it either though because I'm just going to keep tabs on this hive. And uh, we're going to see how that goes. I'm leaving it to itself because it recently swarmed. Now we're out here at a flow hive. This is a flow hive plus. It's got those aluminum black coated metal adjustable legs. It's got that uh, tray that you pull out deep. 10 frame deep uh, brood box and that's got a medium super on and they're already full so they have to be expanded otherwise I'm gonna lose these bees they're gonna swarm and they're very productive this colony is always active so hive number 16 the entrance is wide open I could close it up a little bit and I'm gonna remind you again if you're using the insulated be smart inner covers you have to scrape them smooth before you can put them on a flow super and look at the difference in material. This flow super is a seven frame hoop pine and it's coated with a marine varnish. So it's been used before again. So the flow supers that have been used before when they're not falling off in the grass are, uh, <laughs> are um, quickly reused by the bees. It smells right. It's got wax on it and they're going to use it. So we're getting rid of the insulated inner cover on this one because I couldn't get all the material down on top of the flow super. We've got a hole in the center there. I'm going to cover that with a piece of wood. And uh, so that shim I actually made out of a flow brood box. I'm going to show you that on another hive here in a minute. And uh, that gives me space to put a feeder on if I wanted to. And we're using the flow hive roof, but I've insulated that with double bubble and the double bubble is glued to the interior surface of that uh, flow hive cover. So there it goes. Now this is a really tall hive, uh, so it's got a mismatch of equipment, hoop pine, flow super, man lake, medium box, and of course a flow hive cedar uh, brood box that's 10 frame, and we have to strap it because it's tall. So that's pretty much it. And then we look inside that today on the 11th of June, and they're already working those cells. So I did that in the nick of time too. These colonies are really productive and it's amazing to me because we have not had rain and you also want to go down and look through all these connections to make sure you don't have a big gap in there somewhere they will seal up the smaller gaps with propolis but you also notice that these boxes mismatch in size and i'm going to fix that this one is going to be the best looking flow hive in my apiary right now it's a flow hive 2 plus it's got those ant moats on the legs adjustable legs aluminum supports it's all made out of cedar. We've got that uh, baseboard with the aluminum screen in it. It's got a tray that you remove. This is a 10 frame brood box. And here's what I did. So this is part of what I wanted to show today is I took that inner cover and I actually glued it to a shim that would accommodate a rapid round, for example. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. This is also the roof. And just as I did with the other one, I took double bubble glued it to the inside of the flow roof and created an insulated roof. I also loose leafed in here the double bubble on the feeder shim that I've made from a brood box. And I just put layers in here. We have an empty rapid round feeder that's just there as a placeholder. The plug is back in the corner there, but this will stay empty. What we're doing is building up this colony because this is a recently hive swarm. So we're going to let them fill out that uh, 10 frame brood box, but I made a medium super for it because look what's going on here six or seven of these frames are already drawn out most of it's capped that is incredible progress for a freshly hived swarm and so we're going to expand this one and what i'm showing you now is a good enough configuration to get your bees through winter so we have a 10 frame deep root box we're supering up with a medium super that i made from a full depth 10 frame super. That's where I got the feeder shim. I cut it off at the bottom. Now I have a matching medium super that I put medium frames in. And from the extra material, I made this feeder shim. That's why it's marked brood there and that's glued to the inner cover. And uh, I've got all the space I need. And now I've got the flow roof on it. And we're gonna strap that down until they propolize everything together. But what you're looking at here for a new colony this year is all they're going to need to get through one of our winters. And there's no queen excluder or anything like that because these bottom two boxes for me and the way I manage flow hives 
are always just for the bees. And because this is a new swarm, I'm just going to give them an added uh, benefit here by sticking these wedges in. Now the bees are going to tell me if they want them there or not, right? They're going to seal them up with propolis, or they're going to chew at them if they don't want them. So seal with propolis, they want it, and they welcome that smaller entrance. If they don't seal it with propolis and they chew away at the wood, then they want that opening wider. And these are all 3 8 inch high. Mice can't get in them. No need for a mouse guard. So this should make it easier for them. Less uh, work defending. And we've got a whole winter flow hive configuration with everything matching because they don't sell the medium uh, supers. So I bought brood boxes. I'm cutting them down and getting two things out of a deep brood box. A feeder shim that I glued to the inner cover and I'm getting a medium super that they'll use for winter. Now if by some miracle they super expand and they fill that medium super wall to wall I'll be uh, getting honey from them this year. Here we are in another hive looking things over. Again the same thing over and over. Drawn comb capped honey. We've got a deep box here on number 14. This is also a flow hive. It's been around for quite a while. And uh, it's a double deep, actually. So they've already filled this out and swarmed out on me once. They got ahead of me. That's what I'm trying to help you out with here. Get back on these. The good news is somehow a queen went out, came back mated, even though we've robbed this hive and we made a split from it. Uh, now we have triple deeps. So we have two deep boxes, and this is a eight frame Langstroth, and it's a six frame Flow Super on there. I was out there today. And they're already filling those flow super cells. So we did that just in time too. The bees let us know what's going on. So there again, the smoker just keeps going. This fuel is good stuff. It's not overwhelming. The bees don't seem to care a lot. And this colony is a little bit behind. And that's because they beat me to the punch and they swarmed. But what they did is they left behind a lot of capped honey. So what I'm hoping for and uh, they had queen cells that recently hatched so or they emerged from the queen cell they hatched from their eggs and uh, so I supered this one too because the activity at the entrance is enough and what if I'm wrong if I'm wrong they just won't fill it so I'm taking that gamble right now so hive number 12 has a lot of activity they're bringing a lot of uh, pollen hive number nine is another old uh, flow hive the flow hive 2 not the 2 plus and you can tell because it has the wooden legs the wooden supports around the legs there and they're adjustable it's just got a deep this is a 8 frame Langstroth box 8 frame medium and uh, I'm gonna put a Ross round super on this one I just want to see if they're gonna fill it out this colony seems to pump up and generate a swarm and then build their population and generate a swarm and I'd like to have them build their population and fill these comb honey uh, cassettes for me and of course they have their own resident jumping spider also they're everywhere they just come to check you out they want to see how we're keeping bees maybe they think you're gonna hand them a tidbit I don't know there's a whole culture of people that have pet jumping spiders and they feed them and the jumping spiders come out to get the feed from them so there we have it uh, my glove uh, this is I just use these gloves uh, to keep my nitrile gloves, keep my hands clean a little bit. They don't hold up. They fall apart. Your hands sweat in them. Now I want to go over this smoker. This thing is, it's still lit. In fact, it stayed lit right past sunset. I had to leave it outside. And I'm going to show you what the stuff is. It's a biomass pellets from Ernst Seeds. And they partnered up with my beekeepers association, the Northwest Pennsylvania beekeepers. And, uh, I guess they're selling these. I bought two of them. They weren't given to me. I paid my money for it. So there's your contact information if you want to get this smoker fuel. If you want these pellets, uh, they burn low key. Uh, they generate a nice even smoke. The bees respond really well to it. And I want to thank you for watching. So I hope there was something helpful today. And if you're looking for a configuration for your flow hive for winter, hopefully this answered those questions for you. Thanks for watching start supering. It's a busy year.